Hello, welcome to my comprehensive guide to using Top Tree Warlock in PvP. Today we'll be covering how to reach top speeds using both bounce dashes and double dashes in the neutral game, and how to use them defensively and aggressively. We'll also cover how to use Top Tree Dawnblade Super most efficiently without having to switch jumps. Towards the end of the video I'll be showing you how to use the Wings of Sacred Dawn, uh, or more so how I use it to add style and a whole bunch of character to the Icarus Dash playstyle. We'll talk briefly about its strengths, weaknesses, and some useful trivia that will satisfy any what-if questions at the end. Uh, most of the examples will be given with an in-game clip to highlight its viability and show that it actually can be used uh, in real games. Uh, if you want to make every kill that you get in Destiny 100% more satisfying and learn how to really style on some people, let's go! I'm trying to wait for that spectral to come get me. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to be showing you off here on Dead Cliffs, just the kind of speed that we're looking for. So obviously make sure you're on top tree, you've got the across dash there. Make sure you bind it to something good. I've got a side button on my G502 mouse, uh, and that's where my across dash is uh, bound to. So that's the kind of speed we want. Uh, a lot of people are asking why I use swords in this particular playstyle. It is just so that you can see exactly when your feet touch the ground, because the key to maintaining and building up speed with the either the double dash or the bounce dash is to have your feet on the ground for as very few frames as possible uh, so that you carry the momentum. You'll see what that looks like uh, later on in other clips if you do it wrong. Now this is what happens when a lot of people try to use the Icarus dash. They just use them back to back and they go absolutely nowhere. Uh, here is me covering twice that distance in one proper dash you know, and a bunny hop glide. So starting off with simple bounce dashing, uh, it's quite as simple as jumping and then pressing glide and dash in quick succession. After you've got the rhythm down, you just need to focus on two things. Number one is jumping as soon as you land from your first dash to keep your momentum. And number two, after you bounce, try to hit the glide dash as fast as you can. That now means you're at top speed and then you just need to focus on carrying it. Don't forget to either bounce again or glide every time you need to extend it. You can either bounce or glide to carry your momentum depending on what terrain you have to work with. So once you've got the bounce dash master just going in a straight line, your next step should be learning to turn after your first bounce. You can either use this to hit a snipe or just to get some lane information. I mean, or just 3P because that's in the game forehead. Try and practice hitting well-known lanes from manageable speeds. Obviously the better you get at it and the more practice you have, uh, the more consistently you'll be able to snipe at faster speeds. So don't worry if you don't get it straight away, it does take a lot of practice. So be patient. Here are just some scenarios to just show that you can perform high speed snipes and strafe snipes without the wings of Sacred Dawn, uh, but you are then restricted by you know typical gravity and uh, sort of the speed in which you fall. Uh, and from what I hear from other people that have tried it without the wings, uh, it is just very inconsistent. If you shoot someone in the head half the time, it will just miss. Just remember that the wings do give an inherent bonus to in-air accuracy, which makes them feel considerably more consistent. Here's just a few clips of me messing about pretending someone's trying to aim me. Everything that you can do forwards with dashing, you can do in any direction you please. So here is showing off some retreating uh, bounce dashes, and you can use this to get away from some aping shotgun players, and you can also do something called a fadeaway, uh, which is the full speed forward double dash, but then you turn around as soon as you bounce, and you snipe them as you fade away, just like this. That's why Ray wasn't that. Where is he? So now we're on to double dashes. Now this is what I see a lot of players doing, and they're doing it wrong. The only time you ever need to be double dashing like this is if you get rezzed in a bad spot. Then you can just wiggle your mouse, jump and spam double dash in different directions to try and throw off the sniper's aim. Great players are just going to dome you before you get out of the respawn animation anyway. So double dashes are used uh, as a great way to reach a lane before your opponent, to disengage, or to gather speed really quickly without a runway. Again, the inputs are actually really simple for this, just jump, glide dash, glide dash. This can be done at any speed, but the key to reaching top speed is pressing glide and dash as fast as you can in as quick a succession as you can um, to gather that speed. Again, if you need that momentum carried, make sure you bounce and you get your feet off the ground as quickly as you can. 
So here you can see the Wings of Sacred Dawn, you know, what it does, all the um, benefits that it gives you. I will have a separate video coming up very shortly about the effects of these. But here I'm showing you how essentially you get countered quite easily if you're not very careful. Your wings themselves poke out, but especially when you are actually activating the perk. If you peek a corner too slowly, they're going to know where your head is before you know where their head is. And here you can see me showing off the 15% damage reduction, 21 on the floor, 18 in the air. You can survive things like sentinel throw, uh, sentinel shield throws, mountain top without sticky grenades. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. It's really, really good. The best things is it reduces the TTK of things like spare rations and old fashioned from a three tap to a four tap. And that is how we counter the wings coming out from behind the wall. You got to add that speed. You can see here that the moment you ADS, you start to float and your momentum is multiplied from whenever you activate the glide. So you'll be flying up if you immediately activate it after jumping, so ADS straight after jumping. You'll fall, fall down quite quickly if you ADS while falling, or you can hover if done at the jump's apex. If you rapidly tap ADS, you can hover for longer. We call this stalling, and this is really useful for holding a lane or staying higher for longer. The hard counter to this is just sword peeking or emote peeking. That's fun, am I right? So momentum is also carried in directions with a much slower rate of decay, just simply meaning that you can now glide forward, back and sideways and keep even more speed than usual. you're challenging multiple angles from the air, instead of just ADS dashing, ADS dashing, you activate spacebar once you come out of ADS. You can see that here. So that allows you to have more air time and more control over your descent. Now this is one of my favourite parts of this playstyle, it's being able to make your own lanes and to be able to challenge multiple lanes uh, really quickly while still either aggressing or retreating. You're only as good as you are creative. Here's some examples of challenging some common lanes from a completely new angle. And here's a clip of me winning a duel with Ninja with Noel using one of these angles. Floaty thing is like that's good when super... someone's when someone's good with it. Yeah, because like you don't know which way to You've look. When it's it's yeah. pretty uncommon though. This is probably the best one we've pl I've ever played in a long time. Nice shot. You literally hit your fucking head. <laughs> So I jumped into a private match just before Trials started this weekend to find some of these creative lanes. I found six and hit all six within the first card. They came in incredibly useful to some of my flawlesses. And there'll be another video coming soon with all of these. In fact, here's an example of one. I'll stay over on the church side more. Oh, one's right, one's right. I think. Here's just a few clips of me messing about, showing you how to, you know, retreat and challenge multiple lanes at once, uh, how to disengage out of an area uh, while still being able to put in some pressure into certain engagements. Here's another example of finding some really useful angles. That's exactly where heavy spawns during a lot of game types. Uh, and if your team has spawned in the corner, then people aren't going to be behind you, they're just going to be in front of you. This is an absolutely excellent spot. Uh, you can float out of here and during things like Iron Banner and Control, that is where the flag spawns. So here you can see that you can do it without the um, 
grenades effect, but with the grenades effect the heat rises. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to go over that in this video, it's very self-explanatory. You can float way out much further than you normally can, you have much more time than you normally do, uh, and you've even got some spare time to challenge another lane if you wanted before exiting it out. And here's just 30 seconds of me just freestyling, uh, you know, uh, imagining people are in certain common spots and just moving around the map how I would uh, typically. As you can see during the air sniping clips, try and get in the habit of Icarus dashing as soon as you fire. It's an old trick I used to learn in Destiny 1, but be careful that you always have some dashes left, otherwise you end up dead. Okay, so finally uh, we're on to the last section of this video, which is how to use this uh, best with Dawnblade. So here's the typical rhythm you're going to want. You want to jump, glide, and then cancel your glide. Unlike the neutral game the air dashing, when you Icarus dash inside of Dawnblade, it does not cancel your glide automatically. Uh, and don't go ahead and waste all your super energy by doing what I just did. Uh, don't do that. So here I'm going to break it down for you, uh, and then I'll later shorten it to just the inputs. So we jump, we glide, we then hit the Icarus dash, the game puts us back into glide. That little blue circle of air means that it's put us back into glide, so we need to cancel the glide, reinitiate the glide, Icarus dash, cancel the glide again, turn around because we get about to hit a wall, Icarus dash once again, the game puts us back into glide, so we cancel it, and we Icarus dash out, and we continue. So I'll try and shorten this down to inputs for you. Space dash, space, space dash, space, space dash, space, space dash, space, space dash, space. Okay, and the very final clip of today will be just showing that everything you can do again you can do uh, backwards. Just watch where you're going. So thank you ever so much ladies and gentlemen and I hope this has helped you with this playstyle and I hope you pick it up because it's super fun uh, and super rewarding. Just to let you know I will have another video coming very soon just showing how to min-max the whole efficiency of this playstyle. I'm going to have uh, breakdowns of whether or not mobility helps with the speed, uh, lightweight weapons, how they affect the speed of uh, both bounce dashes and double dashes, um, and we'll also have the effects of stacking uh, enhanced unflinching, regular unflinching, and no distractions on top of the unflinching that the chess piece gives you to just see exactly how much reduction we get. Um, thanks once again, and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.